folks, Scott Sager with you here, RTC TV4. We're here today with another special treat as we introduce the political candidates for the November election to you right here on RTC TV4. Today we've got a guest from the Plymouth area. This is Michelle Livinghouse. Michelle is running for Indiana State Representative, District 17, which covers right along the uh, county line and also Rochester and Akron. Welcome. Good to be here. It's Thank good you. to have you. So you're running for the Indiana um, House, of Representatives. House of Representatives, District 17. Again, that's going to cover right along that Fulton County, Marshall County line, and then also cover the cities of Rochester and Akron, correct? Yes. Okay. So you're from Plymouth originally, correct? Yes. Still there now? Yes. Okay, very good. So what are uh, some of the things that have, have drawn you in to be a part of this political process? Well, one of the things I think is that I want to be a local voice in Indianapolis. And we just talked a few minutes ago about the need to um, be local in what we do. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think that we have enough local representati representation in Indianapolis. Okay. That's one of the things. I'm worried about our rural communities mm -hmm. and uh, um, issues with uh, public uh, funding of schools. Okay. Um, and... Um, Obviously, roads, all those things that are local problems yeah. for people. Infrastructure, education, yeah. um, you know, you and I talked off camera. Quality of life issues Quality tend to be uh, getting a lot of attention these yeah. days. And as we uh, try to rebuild our economies and, and rebuild our tax bases, those uh, quality of life issues come into play, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah. So um, what are some of the platform pieces that, that you're pushing for or that, that you're kind of running on? Well, uh one thing is, uh, of course, public education, mm -hmm. funding of public education. Um, we have, uh, my understanding is that uh, education is over 50% of the budget, but we are still um, lagging uh, compared to other states in public education dollars. Okay. Um, and then beyond that, quality of life issues, and mm -hmm. I take that to mean, you know, living wages. We are something like... Uh, this came out yesterday, 48th in um, wages in the, uh, the state of Indiana. So definitely on and the then, lower end of the spectrum there. Yeah, okay. and then um, I saw a report that we are 46 in public, um, or not public, but I'm sorry, um, quality of life issues. Okay. So that, that really uh, concerns me. Yeah. And then um, I think one of the things, and I... I of course, I, you know, I, I did run two years ago. Something mm -hmm. that I think I do bring to the legislature is I have worked for the last 20 years um, as an investigator for Adult Protective Services, yeah. serving vulnerable adults, um, mostly elderly, mm -hmm. but not just the elderly, mm -hmm. um, people with disabilities. Okay. And in that 20 years, I think we have more services to meet the needs, but they're harder to access. I see. And I was just speaking um, earlier in Plymouth, a group of um, people that um, go to a nursing home once a month for a breakfast club. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I was talking with the administrator about the issues people have in accessing um, Medicaid mm -hmm. transportation mm -hmm. and even... Uh, Medicaid. Now, I found this out and I did not know this. When you start the application for mm -hmm. Medicaid now, um, and you know, most people that go into services when they're elderly, like into a nursing home or even into long term care in their home, right. at some point possibly are going, they're going to need Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Now I find out that that process starts, at, it's been outsourced. Mm -hmm. So when you start that application, it is actually a company that's been hired by the state. Gotcha, to third start. party now, vendor. I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. saying that eventually it's not, you know. So I'm like, okay, so this is why I, I've been at this for 20 years. I just learned this today. Mm -hmm. Okay, this has just happened. Um, there's an issue with transportation. Mm -hmm. um, in rural areas, mm -hmm. there is an issue with services because the funding is not always there for the companies, and these are good companies that mm -hmm. serve people in their home, um, the reimbursement is so low mm -hmm. that they cannot find staffing. Yeah. So you might qualify for services in your home and not be able to get them because 
of staffing issues. So there's all kinds of issues that are quality of life, and mm -hmm. I see it every day. And so that's one of the things that I think I can bring to the legislature. Maybe bring some common sense back into so. some of the legislation, right? Yes. Very good, very good. So education, uh, we've talked about that. Now, a few years ago, the state of Indiana changed the, yes. the way in which the schools are funded. Yeah. And um, that's, you know, wh whichever side you're on that issue, it's made the schools compete more for their students. Yeah. Um, we've seen that maybe work to advantage in some areas. We've seen that maybe put yeah. the schools behind in some other areas. Yeah. Do you have any specifics that you'd like to bring down to Indianapolis to talk about on, on ways to maybe improve the methodology by which we fund these schools? Yes. Um, I, now the funding follows the student. Okay. And I don't mm -hmm. know that we are going to completely change some of the things that have happened, mm -hmm. such as vouchers for private schools. Mm -hmm. I think we need to look at it, and I think we need to have, um, hold everybody accountable, sure. every school accountable, to spend those tax dollars wisely. And mm -hmm. if those kids aren't, uh, you know, we can't give uh, a private school a pass. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we need to look at that. And then I think we also need to look at um, some um, additional funding for some of our rural schools. Sure. This is what scares me. Um, Culver now is putting a referendum on the ballot, okay. as did Argus a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. This is what I say about public education in rural, our rural counties mm -hmm. of Marshall and uh, Fulton County. Um, some people talk about failing schools. I talk about struggling schools. Okay. We have great schools. Yeah. Um, Triton, uh, Rochester, yeah. uh, Tippy Valley, yeah. Argus, Plymouth, all of them. I don't want to leave anybody out. Mm -hmm. Culver, mm -hmm. great schools. Yeah. Great programs. Okay. Mm -hmm. I say we have struggling schools mm -hmm. in rural communities. We don't have um, a lot of the issues. And, you know, you look at Culver is already a consolidated school, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Where are these kids going to go to school? Right. This is not fair. Right. The question becomes, do we put yeah. these kids on a bus for an hour every yeah. morning to go to one big, large regional school? Right. And what's the, what's the gain loss yes. uh, of doing that, right? Yes. Well, uh, of course, we're in a lot of those schools with our yes. partnerships uh, here at RTC, and so... Um, we can attest, great people, great yes. educators, caring, compassionate people, and the kids that are coming out of these schools are phenomenal. Yes. Um, you know, we've, we've interviewed a number of these students, and so despite the struggle, they're still pushing hard to, um, to produce yes. uh, an education that these kids can take forward and do great things with. And again, there's another push now for these kids to start coming back and working in our communities instead yes. of just going to the big cities or yes. staying in Bloomington or whatnot. So we're seeing some of that start to trickle back and that's a great thing as well, right? Yes. Okay. Well, we talked about the living wage. Um, there are some in the state of Indiana that want to take minimum wage up. There are some who don't think that it um, it's the part of the government to necessarily mandate a higher minimum wage and they think that the market should take care of itself. What are some of your thoughts on well, that? Well, you're going to pay on one end or the other. Okay. So if um, people that are not making a living wage and mm -hmm. they're working 40 hours a week, mm -hmm. but we're, we're subsidizing them with other programs. Okay. So that's public, that's public welfare to corporations. Right. Right. So I say we need to raise the the minimum wage. We need a fair economy for everybody that works for everybody. Very good. Very good. I appreciate that. Um, so we've got the schools. We've talked a little bit about infrastructure. And of course, we've had a lot going on with the 31 corridor happening. Um, what are some of the other infrastructure things? And what are some of the things you think the state might be able to do to help? Well, I know in uh, many of our rural areas, there's a huge issue with Things like bridges. Yeah. That kind of stuff yeah. really Bro Bridges me. scare me, right? Yeah. I, I can drive around a pothole, <laughs> but I have to go over the bridge. Yeah, I, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that really, that really concerns yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Bridges is one thing. Well, lots of great things um, to be talking about here. Of course, I love it. Anytime anyone throws their hat in the ring and wants to give a part of themselves to serve others, and that's just a wonderful thing. So 
as always, uh, whichever party you are in, we want you to be out there and expressing your opinions and your voices during the election. Get out the vote, as they say. So um, what are some of the things you've got coming up in the next month before, um, before the election? Are you... You know, a lot of speaking engagements. Any particular speaking engagements few, coming up? A few, and I'm looking for more. And okay. I, I, I'm a big, I love uh, knocking on doors. Yeah. And I've been knocking on doors. Of course, you know, we have the Blueberry Festival next. That's coming up. In, in, in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in Plymouth. And now, I kind of like this. Um, we have never been allowed to have, like, political booths. You can you can campaign all you want mm -hmm. at anything you want to go to, okay. but you can't have political booths or I they see. they don't you know and that's kind of nice because mm -hmm. that gets you out yeah it, you know and of course we do the parade and we sure. have a good time with that sure. so that's a big thing and then um, I'm looking forward I can't wait till the chili cook off <laughs> <laughs> right here <laughs> in Rochester is, I've got that on the calendar yeah. already. And um, I didn't realize two years ago what a big deal that was. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have lots and then, of folks. Yeah. Coming. And then we have, um, on the 15th of September, we have a Latino Fest oh, in um, Plymouth. The, this is the second year. Nice. And it's huge. Yeah. Um, it was wonderful. It was well attended. Um, I think they started in the evening uh, last year. We are starting at 1 o'clock. Okay. And I think it runs through. One to nine. Afternoon so. event. Very good. Very good. Well, we've got Michelle Livinghouse here for you. And uh, you have a website, Michelle? Or where can folks find out Facebook yes. information um, about you? I'm on Facebook. Okay. I'm um, Living House for State House. Okay. Pretty easy yeah. this time. Living House for State House. <laughs> and Michelle Living House for State Representative is Excellent. my Facebook. Excellent. Well, folks, check her out. Learn all you want to learn from her. We appreciate very much you coming in today getting to know the viewers or letting the viewers get to know you just a little bit more and we wish you the best in your thank upcoming you. election thank you very much again thank you for watching here on rtc tv4 we'll have more political interviews throughout the season thanks again